Well, my original aim with the, the Pavlo Petri project was to record it in as much detail as possible. Um, it was first surveyed back in 1968 by a team from the University of Cambridge using measuring tapes and just snorkels from the surface. Um, and they did a fantastic job. But the reason we've gone back 40 years later was to use new technology and to use the cutting edge of technology every year. And it's developing so quickly that each year almost we've used different techniques. Um, probably now Pavlo Petri is the most surveyed bit of seabed in the world and we've applied probably more techniques to it than, you know, than anywhere else. Um, and every year I think this is the best survey technique. No, actually this is the best survey. Oh no, now we've cracked it. But now actually I honestly believe that we have a technique which is going to I think revolutionise the way people do underwater survey. It doesn't just work in shallow water, it works in very deep water as well. Uh, and what it gives you is a photorealistic impression of the seabed. I mean, just as the seabed looks. I mean, when I started the project, I couldn't have hoped for the technique that we've now got. Um, essentially, it's, it's um, a technique that's been developed by the Australian Centre for Field Robotics. Um, and it's a stereo photogrammetry technique and what that means is it's a, it's a system that uses stereo photo cameras um, over the site to create a, a, a map, a photo map of the site but not only that it adds 3D into it um, for the two different perspectives from the cameras. Equally they can attach a multi-beam system to this equipment which is like an acoustic system um, which will give you a three-dimensional impression of the seabed. So basically you mesh the photographs together with the, 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 the 3D mesh and you've got a, a 3D a photorealistic surface. You can go down and you can, you can examine individual shards on the seabed and the resolution is such that you can actually identify them and then you can pull out you know, to then look at the full site in, in it over eight hectares. So really, it's, it's, for me, it's just phenomenal. And the nice thing about the Pavlo Petri project is we've used lots and lots of different techniques. So we have lots of comparisons to assess how accurate um, a particular technique is. Um, and the base level that we used was um, simply using a total station. That's a laser um, um, method. It's a machine that shoots a laser to a prism out in the water. And um, it's exactly the sort of thing that you'll see people surveying um, motorways with or you know, doing building surveys with. You'll see them you know, in every city in, in, in the UK. Um, we used that in the water using just a, a slightly longer pole and divers out in the water. But that's given us a baseline, a very accurate baseline, to within about five centimetres as our level of error for the whole plan. And that's given us as a plan of the city, but it's vector lines. It's just lines like you, know, you, you, would, you would draw with a big, if you imagine, a big digital pen. It's a two-dimensional plan, but but it's also got the 3D information, so you can look at it in 3D, but it's just lines. Um, and what this new technique has given us is the actual photorealism, which we can overlay onto that um, and check the accuracy of it. Because we've also used other techniques. We've used acoustic techniques, which work a wee, a wee bit like um, um, laser scanners, and you get point clouds, so you get three-dimensional point clouds underwater. Um, we used a, a, a technique called sector scan survey, um, developed by a company called Konsberg Mesotech, um, and it was a group from America, um, Nautilus Marine Group, who came and did that for us uh, last year. And that was fantastic. I mean, very, very quickly, you can get a 3D point cloud of what's underwater. So you can find things, you can get two-dimensional maps from it very, very quickly. But the reason the new technique is so good is because it's photorealistic. People can look at it straight away and go, oh, wow, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a submerged city, you know. What's been exciting about working with the BBC and bringing them on board is this year we managed to work alongside CGI movie professionals. These are people who normally work on films like Star Wars, uh, Prime Focus they're called, and, and they are actually working on Star Wars Episode 1, making it into 3D at the moment. But anyway, um, so we were actually able to work alongside these people in the field. I mean, normally what would happen um, when there's a reconstruction is the archaeologists would go and do the work and then the TV people would make the reconstruction. There'd be no connection between the two. But what we were able to do, because we were getting this 3D photorealism uh, in the field, was actually at the same time have the guys from the, the, the CGI company build the walls and work with the archaeologists. So for I think for amongst probably the first time we have a we have a, a data-driven reconstruction. It's based on the archaeology and it's produced by a team that worked with the archaeologists. Well, essentially what we're doing is bringing a 3,000-year-old city back to life. You know, something that hasn't existed for 3,000 years. And that's the exciting part of it. It makes, it's, it makes you change your view of the city. 
um, in a way that you wouldn't have done just working on it. Because we had these guys working with us, and I was looking at walls and I was thinking, well, this, this room could be something different. This is, this is a house, but this is a, a building of a slightly different function. And when you start building the walls and looking at it in a way that you don't see it underwater, you can come away above it, you can look at it, you know, you can really examine it. it I began to kind of change my interpretation of certain buildings. And, you know, the, 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 the CGI team became part of the, of the research process. And there was a quite an exciting synergy between the CGI guys and the archaeologists in the field. Well, this is the third year of, of what we hope is going to be a five-year project. And we're in the process now of applying for the next permits to, to start um, excavations on the site. Um, this year, we carried out a couple of uh, uh, quite small test trenches just to see if there's deposit surviving on the site. Thankfully, what we found was there's actually still quite a lot of deposit um, to be excavated. For example, we were finding the top of storage vessels, the top of pithos storage vessels, which we think were imported from Crete, interestingly enough, but showing networks of contact throughout the eastern Mediterranean. But the top sitting in, in, the, the, in the seabed implies there's a metre to a metre and a half of deposit still to be excavated underwater. So I think the next phase is when it gets really excited. That's when we start to really start finding the material. Um, and hopefully, because the site is a submerged site, because it's underwater, um, we should be getting organic items, wooden items, the kind of things that don't survive on land because it's, it's you know, underwater is a site, it's, it's, it's an area that lacks oxygen. And particularly when things are covered up with sand, you get a nice oxygen-free environment. Organic food remains can survive, you know, rope could survive, um, baskets could survive from the Bronze Age, which would be a really thrilling find. We'll use the uh, stereo photogrammetry to record the trenches in three dimensions as we're excavating them. And we trialled this this year as well, the idea that you, you excavate a level, a layer, and then you, 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 you do the stereo photogrammetry technique in 3D, then you excavate the next layer, you do it again, and then the next layer. And the idea is you can go back and you can almost re-excavate the site. And we're recording exactly what we're doing in three dimensions as we go through the deposits. So we're creating a record that other people can then go back and use and can go back and analyse and perhaps even reinterpret.